How you doing guys? My name is Alejandro. I'm known as Chino Vega, owner of CNL Customs. Uh, I'm, since 2018, I've been in charge of Double Trouble, which is the champion from 2018, 2019, and we're trying to do something new for this coming year. And uh, I've just been lucky to work with the best guys in the business, which is like Fernando in Oden Graving, Alberto, California Postery, and a bunch of other guys that they've been in this, uh, in this project. There is way too many to mention everybody else, but everybody knows what they did. And uh, I hope you guys like the, the new version of Double Trouble for 2020. The first thing that we did in this car was uh, we took everything apart, which is including all the moldings, bumpers, upholstery. Uh, we designed a new grill on it, made everything fit perfectly to the car. We uh, bolt on all the bumpers the way they're supposed to be, including the moldings, we clear the car, color sun and bath. Uh, and in the posture, there was uh, uh, California posture and myself doing, he did the majority of the party, the body work painting, uh, a bunch of panels that we cut for it, uh, making, making sure the system work, uh, engine, the, the, the whole car, making sure everything, everything that is on the car, it works. Uh, I took over this car right after the 2018 car of the year. And they brought him into the shop. And that's when I, we did the whole posture. Everything got it done brand new. Uh, everything that you see in the front and the, and the grill, and the, and the back, uh, we put a, a bumper key, bumper guards, spotlights. Um, make sure all the windows, system, make, just make sure everything work on it. Well, this is the thing, with these cars, you never stop. You never stop with these cars. Uh, a lot of people think like, what else can you do on it? The way that I see it, I have five, six different things that I can do the next time that I get a car. So even if you see it for this upcoming year, it won't, it won't be done. We have something else on our sleeve that we can make it better for the next show. That's, that's the biggest question. No, yeah. Like every time they will go out, they always ask you like, so what else can you do on it? It's in a, in a show car, it's always something to improve in every single angle. I don't see, I've been doing this since the late 80s and I never seen a car that is perfect, which it give you a, a, an allowance to improve. And that's every single car. I don't care how clean your car it is, you have something wrong on it that it can be improved. Well, like everybody else, when I was young, I was kind of doing things that I wasn't supposed to. And uh, that's basically what it led me to, to be in through the low rider scene. I opened a shop in uh, early 90s, and it was nothing but hydraulics. I used to be, we used to compete professionally as a, as a, as a, as a hoppers, which everybody called them hoppers. We used to have a luxury that we broke like, I think about 10 world records. And we did our, our own car, which the name is Orgullo Mexicano, that it was, uh, we started competing early 2000s. And uh, we never made it to compete. That car, it was just to make something different because we were getting tired of the hoppers. So we made that car and we went to Portland just to go to our regular show. We show up at Monte Carlo. And after a sudden, the, that Monte Carlo that we made just for a show, he won the car that he was the current champion, which was Evo 63. And the judges came up to me and said, like, do you know what you guys did? Like, no, what happened? You guys beat the car of the year. I'm like, what do you mean? Yeah, you guys beat it with your car. And we're like, okay, cool, that's, that's nice. And so after that, me and my brother got out and we're like, okay, let's make more things because we weren't ready to compete and we, we, we'll be the champion. That means we, we have a chance to do something. And, and we didn't know how far can you go into building cars like that. And we actually started working in the car and did a, a bunch of crazy stuff that it was never done before. The, our car was the first car driving without a steering wheel. No brake pedal. Everything was electronic on it. And that was early in the 2000, like 2001, 2002. So when you see a lot of people saying like, oh, you know, look at, uh, we pay my transmission, we did that. 
our transmission was engraved in close to like 2003 around there. And it was uh, a, a handmade frame, completely handmade. We didn't buy no parts besides the metal. It was all made by hand. We got, uh, man, we, we won Quaker State two times, which it was, uh, at that time, it was a good money, it was 10,000. And uh, we got a three time car of the year. Our car is the only one up to now that we know that has been in the Louvre Museum with Mona Lisa side. That's in Paris. And, uh, so that's our, I think that's our bigger goal besides doing a whole lot of things. We've been in three different countries with our car. So that's one of the highlights that, is, that it bring us to where we are right now. When I got to this country, I remember I, I grew up in Pacoima, which is a really rough neighborhood back in the days. Right now it's okay. And I saw a Candy Apure Carilla passing out from, from my house, which the owner is uh, Tito. He lives in New Mexico right now. We're still friends up today. And it's one of those things that you see, and it was a whole different car that you see from the rest of the cars. 